Shalom. Today we're going to pick up two more letters that make a little word and see what else that word is connected to. You can still get a font chart. I have tried to edit this chart so that anybody can download it, but I know people have trouble. If you have trouble, just ask for access and I'll give you the access by email. The two letters we're doing today are Bet Lamed. Bet Lamed together does spell a word and it's a usually translated as not or some other particle of negation. First Chronicles 1630. Fear before him all the earth, the world also shall be stable that it not be moved. Psalm 32 9. But not as the horse nor as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in, in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto you. In other words, you don't want them to come near you. Isaiah 26 18. We have been with child, we have been in pain, we have, as it were, brought forth wind. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. So in both cases, the word Baal is used there. The second time it's translated as neither. Now, if you go looking for this word in the Blue Letter Bible, you're going to find some references which seem anomalous. For example, in Psalm 57.9, there is... There is an entry for this word, Strong's 1077, and it appears in a verse where there is no negative. I will praise you, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto you among the nations. So if you look in the Westminster Leningrad Codex, you see the first line. You have the Baal, and then you have a hyphen, and then you have Umim. But in the JPS, there's no hyphen, and this makes more sense. Ba le Umim, among the people. I covered the um and the um in a different video if you want to check on that. Again, with this idea of not, we have this word bli, which means without. Genesis 31:20. And Jacob stole away unawares to Laban the Syrian, in that he told him not that he fled. Literally, it says without telling him. Deuteronomy 4:42. That the slayer might flee thither which should kill his neighbor unawares, in other words, without him knowing that he did it, and hated him not in times past, that the fleeing unto one of these cities he might live. In Job 18.15, It shall dwell in his tabernacle, because it is none of his, in other words, without it belonging to him, brimstone shall be scattered upon his habitation. Hosea 4.6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, without knowledge, because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject it you, that you shall be no priest to me, seeing you have forgotten the Torah of your God, and I will also forget your children. And here's a combined word. The bli is there without, and ya'al, which means worthwhile. So sometimes we see it just written as bilial or bliya'al, and then sometimes it's actually translated into worthless. Deuteronomy 13.13 13, Certain men, the children of Belial, or Bliaal, are gone out from among you and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which you have not known. Or in Second Samuel 22.5, When the waves of death compassed me, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. Men who are Bliaal, they, they are without worth. And we see this word carried over even into the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 615. And what concord has Messiah with Belial? Or what part has he that believes with an infidel? So the believer is the Messiah person who believes in Messiah, and the infidel is the Belial, the worthless man. Another related word which shows up meaning without or except is Bilti. Genesis 311. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree whereof I commanded you that you should not eat? Genesis 43, 3. And Judah spake unto him, saying, The man did solemnly protest unto us, saying, You shall not see my face, except without bringing your brother to be with you. Exodus 9, 17. As yet you exalt yourself against my people, that you will not let them go, in other words, without sending them out. Exodus 22.20 20. He that sacrifices unto any god, save, that is, except unto Jehovah only, he shall be utterly destroyed. 
There's another combined word, which means except for or besides, and that's bil ade. So you have the bli, and then you have ad, which kind of means up to, but together they just mean besides or except for. We'll see the example. Genesis 14.24, save, except for only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men which went with me, Aner, Eshkol, and Mamre, let them take their portion. In Genesis 41:44, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without you, except for you, shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. So this word, Bilade, it combines with the personal pronoun. So if you look in Genesis 41, 44, you will find that it says biladecha because the you is attached to the preposition. So here are the related verbs. The first one is bala. In other words, when something becomes old and it wears out, you don't have it anymore. Genesis eighteen twelve. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being also old? Deuteronomy 8.4 Your raiment wax not old upon you, neither did your foot swell these forty years. In Job 13.28 And he, as a rotten thing, consumes as a garment that is moth-eaten. In other words, it's eaten up, it's worn out, it has become old. Also, when you use up your time... Job 21, 13, they spend their days in wealth, and in a moment they go down to the grave. So these things are gone. You are without them. They don't exist anymore. In the Aramaic in Daniel, this is spelled bala, spelled with an aleph instead of a hey, a verse that we know, Daniel 7, 25, and he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change the times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until time times and the dividing of time. Feels like about now, right? Another related word, bala, which means to swallow. And once you swallow it, it's gone, and you don't have it anymore. Genesis 41, 7. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears, and Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Exodus 7, 12. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents, but Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Number 1632. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their gods. Job 2.3. And Jehovah said unto Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that fears God? and has choose evil. And still he holds fast his integrity, although you moved me against him to destroy him without cause, to swallow him up. In Psalm 107.27, we see an idiom. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunkard and are at their wit's end. Literally, it says all their wisdom is swallowed up. It's gone. They don't have it. And of course, our friend Jonah, 117, now Jehovah had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So this is a geminate verb. We've talked about those elsewhere where the two last letters are the same. And we have a related idea. Genesis 11:7. go to, let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. When something is confounded or mixed up, you don't have the thing anymore. It's lost in the confusion. Genesis 2.5 And if your oblation be a meat offering, bacon in a pan, it shall be a fine flour, unleavened, mingled with oil. If you mingle fine flour with oil, you can't get the oil back and you can't get the flour back. They're gone. Judges 19.21 so he brought him into his house and gave provender unto the asses, and they washed their feet and did eat and drink. Provender is a mixture of straw and hay and oats. I don't know, whatever whatever donkeys and horses eat. It's a mixture. Hosea 7, 8. Ephraim has mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. 
speaking of the northern kingdom exile into the nations, the people lost their identity for the most part and became half-baked. Also this name, Hevel, Genesis 4.8, And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. Ecclesiastes 1.14 I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. The concept behind Hevel is just a breath of air, a puff of air. And so that is what vanity is all the time you spend trying to do things for your external. Those things are in vain because they will pass away. And Abel's life was like just a puff of air. He was here and then he was gone. One more root, Bahal, to be confused or troubled. Genesis 45, 3. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph, does my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. They definitely are confused. Psalm 6, 3. O my soul is sore vexed, but you, O Jehovah, how long? Proverbs 28, 22. He that hastes to be rich has an evil eye, and considers not that poverty shall come upon him. In other words, he's taking a lot of trouble, moving along quickly to do something that perhaps it's vanity. Ecclesiastes 5.2 Do not be rash with your mouth, and let not your heart be hasty to utter anything before God, for God is in heaven and you upon earth. Therefore, let your words be few. Do not trouble yourself. Do not, do not do things hastily. It is out of confusion. And a noun form, behala, trouble or terror. Leviticus 26.16 I also will do this unto you. I will even a point over you terror, consumption, and the burning ague that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. Isaiah sixty-five twenty-three, They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth this kind of trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of Jehovah and their offspring with them. So we have this basic idea, Bet Lamed, things that are gone, things that are used up, things that we are without those things. Until next time, Tasimit Ha'inayim, Ahashamayim, keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.